Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, ES tested below yesterday's low of day, and uh, we had support at 58 to 60. That's the area where responsive buyers were active, and we saw a strong rejection and a move back up towards the previous VPOC of 74.5. At this point, heading into the open, we have pre-market support 67.75 to 69.75, followed by initial support 63.5 to 65.5. Uh, looking at TF, which is a market that has been leading to the downside, uh, one thing to note is that TF actually did not make a new low in the overnight session. And so far, it's very balanced, but it has been holding up fairly well. So, um, you know, even though we can pull back and we can kind of balance and arrange here, the downside on the bigger picture seems fairly limited. And, uh, you know, that's just something to be aware of. Again, you know, we can still pull back and balance, but uh, on the larger time frames, if TF continues to hold here and, uh, you know, we don't get any strong momentum to the downside, then we have to be open to the idea that there just may not be much more downside left, at least in the short term, especially given that, you know, we don't really have any major economic catalyst on the day time frame today. And, you uh, then we have the employment report due tomorrow, which is a uh, you know main catalyst for ending the week. So uh, you know heading into today, we just have to be a bit cautious on the short side and uh, make sure that you know we're not taking any shorts that are too aggressive. And at the same time, we've seen some very decent buy responses from the market down here, and uh, you know buyers can still be active on pullbacks into support whether here at 67.75, 69.75, which is the pre-market support area, or 63.5 to 65.5. Um, you know, this is a more volatile market, so it does require being very much in tune with the real-time momentum situation. So, uh, you know, keep an eye on the NYC tick. Be aware of when you're fading momentum. And if you are fading momentum, then make sure you're getting decent location um, in order to really take that trade. Otherwise, you know, it's quite easy to get caught up in the volatility. And at the same time, be selective, right? Not every zone has to be traded. Make sure that there's enough risk reward. Um, you know, if you're fading a move, make sure that it is exhausted. Uh, anytime you're fading momentum, it's ideal when the move is exhausted into support or into resistance if you're going to take that fade. Uh, but bigger picture, you know, on the upside, if we break out above 75 half to 77 half, the next inflection point is 83 to 85. That's still an area where sellers could be active. But at the same time, if we're seeing a breakout in the Russell, and the key level in the Russell is uh, 1219 to 1221, and if the Russell is breaking out above that zone with any kind of momentum and volume, then on the upside, ES does not have to stop at 83 to 85. You know, it's certainly an area where we could see profit taking, we could get rotation, but uh, you know it's not a major inflection point. So in the event of a strong breakout to the upside above 75 half to 77 half, you know the 83, 85 can get tested, and even the 91 uh, to 93 area can get tested. On the downside, you know we're basically uh, at a point where buyers can step in and be active at any support zone. Um, holding above pre-market support tells you that the market is a bit stronger. If it pulls back deeper, it tells you that uh, you know the market is not quite as strong, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to sell off yet again. Uh, you know we are a bit oversold here, and uh, for that reason, buyers can be active on first tests of every support zone on the way down, and uh, especially if we go down towards the overnight lows. 57 half, 59 half, and that next zone, 5075 to 5275, in the event that we do get continuation, uh, is still a zone where we can get a strong buy response. But ideally, uh, given the level of buying we've seen already and the rejection we've seen already in the overnight session, uh, ideally we don't actually go all the way back down to 57 half to 59 half. You know, ideally we actually hold above the prior day's low, above initial support, and uh, off the open, if we're holding above pre-market support, you know, then we know that there's some, you know, decent opportunity to the upside, and uh, we could eventually balance and still break out, and go higher to 83, 85, and 91 to 93. So those were the main ideas heading into the open. Market is fairly balanced here, short term, and 
you know, we're going to keep an eye on TF to see which way that balance is resolving. A breakout above 19 to 21 and TF would confirm buyers stepping in and being quite aggressive. Uh, a breakdown below 1207 and TF would tell you that, you know, short term, there is still some weakness in this market. And then from there, you know, the Russell could actually go down towards, uh, you know, the 1198 to 1200 area. And uh, that, you know, at the same time, as TF is testing 1198 to 1200, if ES is also at a key support zone, then that can be a good opportunity to enter long and uh, look for a move back up because, uh, you know, a continuation lower seems pretty low odds, uh, especially given the uh, employment report due tomorrow. So today, you know, we're either looking for S&P to continue balancing within this recent range or balance and break out and go up to 83, 85, 91, 93. If we break down, uh, you know, buyers can still step in at pretty much every zone. So those are the main ideas. Uh, let's just be aware of the, again, that momentum and the NYC tick and just look at, you know, whether we're getting any broad market selling uh, off the open. That'll give us a good idea of the intraday bias. And uh, if the intraday bias is not very weak, then it'll be better to focus more on uh, long setups off of support. And if the intraday bias with, you know, opens on really weak internals and momentum is negative and all that, then of course, you know, we have to be careful. It's not a matter of predicting what uh, you know, the market's going to do, but being prepared and then reading the market in real time, judging the intraday context, and then executing, you know, based on combining the trade plan with the intraday read. So those are our main thoughts. Let's see if the buy side can hold it up this morning, and we'll take it from there.